Hey everybody, this Hi. is Daniel. Thanks for joining us on Endless Appreciations. Thanks for your patience as we took a surprise week la- off last week as we, uh, you know, as just you are traveling. record. I, I am joined with a very special guest this week. That's right. It's my co-host Sam Horner just here. That's you know, I do miss your radio swagger. You should pepper well, that here in it more is. often. Yeah. I've been uh, I've I've been spending some time with my brother this week while traveling, <coughs> and my brother, Ooh. he is, uh, he also has the radio voice because he also worked at the radio station that my dad ran because nepotism, I guess. <laughs> uh, mm, wonderful. Yeah, How is the yeah, West Coast treating you? Uh, bizarrely, I think would be the best word to describe it. Uh, we, we lived in, partner lived in, uh, grew up in Seattle, around Seattle, and then lived in Tacoma. I uh, was living in Tacoma when we met. I lived on the Oregon coast for a while, and then I lived in Portland. We're heading to Portland on Sunday. Uh, we're currently in Seattle. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's weird. I, we haven't oh, been back man. in like five years, and like this is just a it's it's a weird it's it's weird it's great I'm having I a great time. I remember Seattle changing quite quickly, even from I think the first time I, was, I ever went there was around 2012, and then I came back in 2016. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy, and you know I'd only ever spent <clears throat> a few days there uh, each yeah. time, so I don't have the full scope of all the change, but it, it was it seemed massive i don't know if that's what change. you're talking about or if it's yeah. more family no, it's stuff just like you, it's but. vibes you know there's like uh I, I was very concerned that we would get here and immediately be like mm, we should move to seattle because like that's my no that's <laughs> well like, that's good like, i'm glad you're not feeling that yeah right so like moving moving is like my thing it's just a it's a jam and i'm not doing that ever again i'm, I'm dying in the house that we own in baltimore it's a wonderful house uh yeah so i'm gonna bury me in the alley yeah i was gonna uh, say your back little parking pad. Rat. <laughs> uh and so you know it's been like it's been very nice to see some friends and some family and it's been very nice to like have perfect weather because seattle's getting a perfect summer which i is will super say rude. as soon as you left the weather got real nice here i've had the windows and doors open every day basically well, this week. you know <laughs> sorry that's very we, there rude. tends to be a, a solid two weeks of just miserable humidity, hundred degree plus, and then it goes away. It might swing back around in another week or two, but I think we're we're through the worst of it. Right when I bought my outdoor air conditioner, the weather got better. <laughs> it's not actually an outdoor air conditioner, by the way. This is I don't the, remember it, if we talked about that on, on the podcast. So just no, to clarify, just, just in our real life. It's it just is, a uh, big machine that they use at wedding venues when they're outdoors under tents, and it you, it just has a tub of water that like circulates helps through some coils. The air to be cooler because outside. it's just blowing. It's basically a fan that blows across water, and that's it. It's not. What do you an think an air conditioner thing. is? That's yeah, funny. but it's not as energy intensive as an actual AC unit. It is meant for outdoors, and it's not, you know, uh, an obscene use of. <laughs> I love that you were worried that someone was going to be like, well, Sam, you are just trying to cool down the earth with your fan. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm contributing to solving the problem with this fan. Yeah. Right. I love that. Everyone just buy AC fans and the planet will no longer melt. Please and thank you. Uh, so we it's have just our- an outdoor fan that, that runs across water. It's not energy intensive. And yeah. I'm a big fan of fans. Want, I, don't want, I don't want to talk about your fan anymore. We've already talked about it. Okay. It's, it's, we're moving well, the on. People haven't heard it. The people, the people need to know. Uh, yeah, I'm. I feel uh, strange. You know, it's good. It's good. It's strange. Uh, I took. I've I've taken. You know, I've been taking my morning photo walks here instead of. Yeah, the Fuji. In Baltimore. Yeah, with the with the Fuji Wonderful. with the GFX. Um, okay. gonna blow my brother's mind this uh, afternoon because we're gonna take a photo walk together and he's gonna use the fuji for a minute and be like whoa what do i do with 100 megapixels and then he's gonna put them on his computer they're gonna break Mm. uh, because it won't be able to handle the files and then he'll never (laughs) edit the photos and that'll be that but if they don't if this doesn't if none of that actually happens and he does edit them and perhaps post them to glass uh you know glass.photo slash caleb ag i am so behind on posting i'm going to today sorry it's been i've been very preoccupied with all these other projects right now but so our vibe i mean like this is a this is a very exciting thing um we had a we had a moment last year uh in july 
where uh, like six weeks, four weeks before your uh, subscriptions renew from Apple, you get an email from them letting you know, hey, this subscription's going to come up for a renewal. If you don't want that, cancel it now. And, you know, we launched, when this comes out on Tuesday, we'll be uh, two days away from uh, Glass's two-year anniversary of launch. Nice. And um, last year, around this time, we were noticing a little a little dip in our in our like community health metrics uh, for July, and I was like, "Oh no, what's going on?" Or like, people got their emails and no one's uploading. Oh no! Mm. Uh, it turns out that didn't that wasn't what was going on. It was um, just summer, <laughs> right? Like gotcha. just just summer. People are taking photos and existing on you know family vacations and and travel and not really using the internet as much. Uh, and so there was a little dip and then they all came back in, uh, and, you know, like end of August and uh, beginning so of September. The exact same thing happens in the wedding world. To be honest, I was talking with the, in a group chat with a couple other more YouTubers than real photographers, but, um, Whoa. They, <laughs> just kidding. They're great. And, uh, everyone's like, man, it's so slow right now uh, across everything, not just shoots, but like their engagement with people on their, I guess, various channels and it's like yeah that happens every summer uh, people are busy taking vacation they're overwhelmed from the you know if you're a wedding photographer from all the weddings that you shot through june july and august still has a few weddings but you're like in editing purgatory and uh yeah it's just how it goes but that's okay i uh have wonderful news for us i, don't, I can't help the other people but this year we're not seeing it people are just right around. so that was your we're growing, point we're here. growing enough that. There's there's enough new people and everyone stick around. Vibes are good. It's really hard to do. We also launched Patron. That happened, and uh, that's I been have going to say, well. a lot of the people commenting on my posts are patrons. I'm impressed. Yeah, I don't know what the ratio of people that follow me to patrons are, but it, it's probably quite high. Yeah. So yeah. that's it's a very exciting time to be a, a glass human being but also you know like a team member we like this is our this is also our our most like burnt out time of the year because like it's easy for us to focus on it like over the holidays over the the winter holidays and you know like winter in the netherlands is grim and it's like oh this is well, of course we're going to be on our computers but like it being perfect outside and like we want to do the same things we're doing the same things of like family vacations traveling whatever and uh it's just it's, it's it feels good can, right now. Can I be honest? I I am increasingly excited about Apple Vision as an environmental kind of being outdoors solution because one thing I've always hated is the fact that you can't do any meaningful especially with photography related stuff uh editing in outdoors. The screens just are not bright enough. And if Apple's vision display is as color accurate as people make it sound. I'm very excited about the fact that I can actually be out outside and and not have it be like a rendered fake space, right? It would be my actual backyard, all of my peripheral, but have a beautiful, fully able to be seen, you know, screen on my laptop floating in front of me while I'm sitting in a chair outside. I, that I'm so in front excited of your about. air con outdoor air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but the, seriously, I, I think it's going to be. There are two wolves inside of me. One wolf is uh, agreeing with you and being very ex excited. The other wolf is, why would you want to do computer things outside? Just be outside, Sam. Be here now, You can do both. I love being outside. That's why I like to run so much, but I wouldn't wear them while running. But if I have the choice of working at my Yet. desk or taking that exact same time that I otherwise would have been strapped to my desk and being outside, I think it's a it's a win-win. I mean, to an outside observer, it's going to look a little silly to see somebody wearing goggles while they're outside. But if you're seeing your environment around you, you it's you it's, could have uh, you could have so edited that sentence down. It's going to look silly yeah. to wear goggles, right? Like yeah. there, it, it's yeah, just going to be silly. It is uh, for now. People will get used to it. Like everything, it else. won't never. It will never not be silly, even if we get used to it and accept it, and uh, they get smaller. It will still be like mm, this is pretty silly. I still, you're right. I still, people walking around, and myself included, when they're like really invested in a phone and almost walk into something, as they're like in a busy city or something. It's like, yep, that that's silly. You look ridiculous. Get off uh, your phone. <laughs> the very, the very first date, official date, 
that my partner and I went on was uh, the 10 year anniversary postal service concert in Portland. Cool. Um, it, it was very romantic. It was very sweet. We were having a very nice time. We had been, you know, going on casual dates. And I was like, no, you're amazing. Let's be in love. What do you say? And she's like, okay, fine. I accept. Uh, <laughs> And so we went we went to the postal service concert as our first little official date. And uh, then she saw the very first boy that she dated in sixth grade in front of Ooh. her at in like in the pit. We're talking like uh, the eight postal service to had 10 pit. people back. Yeah, man. Well, okay. the big Freedia was the opener. So we, we got some some uh, some sweet, sweet dancing. And then we went into the postal service. So the, oh, wow. um, and we're having a like, wonderful time. And she's like, oh my goodness, that's my very first boyfriend from grade school. I'm not saying hello. That's crazy. And then like everything comes full circle. Halfway okay. through the show, his girlfriend held up an iPad to take a photo. <sighs> Thank God that has mostly subsided. I haven't seen an iPad at a wedding in a long time. But there was, you're right, a moment when the iPads first came out that people were not shy about taking a picture with them. So silly. Thank God that stopped. That's the silliest thing I can think of. That's what I feel like that's what it's going to be like when we see someone with an Apple Vision Pro at like a Starbucks or something. I'm like, no, that's 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 that. I will 1000% wear one on an airplane. uh, No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Can I say, um, it's been a while since I've been to Portland, but the few times that I have been, uh, which is probably like five or six, I don't know, it reminds me a lot of Baltimore. Very similar, um, like economic, sort of blue collar y type of. Well, there are black people in Baltimore. Uh, True. I didn't have a good sense of the intense number of white people in Portland (laughs) compared to Baltimore, but just the like overall kind of vibe and history of the city feels very similar. And I guess size wise, they're, they're comparable food. Obviously Portland has quite the edge on Baltimore's got a long way to go there, but it does. I don't know if that's true anymore. I don't know if it's true. I love, we're going to find out. Maybe it's not. That'd be nice. I mean, we've got, we've got our, our meetups on Saturday and, uh, Sunday, so I took. By okay, the time so this yeah, comes talk out, to me about the uh, the plan. What's the agenda on? And oh. I can rush this if you want to get it out before the meetups to kind of juice the numbers. No, no, no. there's no, no there's no okay. juice in the numbers of here. I've already juiced that. I've I've emailed the links like seven times to thousands and thousands of people. Everyone who's coming is coming, right? You know. Yeah. Global global communities it's are free? rough for meetups because it's like free. Oh no, of course it's free. Okay, come on through, enjoy a coffee. Uh, so we're just gonna meet up at a coffee shop. Hang out, chit chat. Then we're gonna take a little stroll, you know, a little photo walk, just a little ooh, street photography. Let Daniel take a portrait of everyone who wants one, and then uh, oh, look at that! We have accidentally ended our walk at a place that serves adult and non-alcoholic beverages. What a treat! And we're gonna hang out, and then but like then I'm also immediately getting in a car and fighting Seattle traffic and driving to portland to do it again the next day uh i need to give you a code so you can give every all of your all of your people little it's been surprising this is a new thing where company a lot more companies are like oh yeah sponsors we'll we'll be your sponsor for your workshop and i'm like what this was never i knew it was a thing back in the day but companies weren't so proactive and insistent about it and i'm like look no sponsors. It gets way too messy in so many weird ways. Even just having an affiliate link that I have for myself, I don't like using um, unless it gives people an extra bonus of like, uh, you know, maybe they were going to get a thousand edits from Imagine. This gets them 2000 or something like that makes sense to me. But affiliate links where I get a kickback of some kind and it's all the same to the, the end user signing up, like that stuff is just so gross at a well, workshop. Great news. It. Uh, you're not getting a kickback. Hello, I know. everyone. That's no one's that, getting that's a kickback. That's why I once. brought it up, because <laughs> if there's glass codes, I'm not getting any kind of kickback. I've made no the, money the off kick... glass or this podcast, but yeah, it's the, fine. The kickback <laughs> is uh, friendship and... Warm, fuzzy and, feelings. Uh, appreciation. Yes. Appreciation. There we go. Now we're living. <sighs> anyway, yeah. that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm up to. I was building a, 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 a AI company. Expensive. Thingy. It's expensive. I I, very... I, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta talk to Stefan. I don't know why you're talking to people that have managed services. Of course, they're gonna well, tell you the. Expenses. I would love to, but I, you know, I'm trying to get this thing 
rolling out ASAP. I can't have it be a side project for somebody that I can't pay. <laughs> so, but you uh, can yeah. pay them. You have money. <laughs> a little bit, not enough. It's good. I have a lot of interest from people. I was very surprised. And can I just say, I never understood the purpose of it until a couple of days ago. Um, the broadcast channels. I don't know. You if cannot you say. The, um, <laughs> the broadcast channels on Instagram are very effective. I was surprised at the, for now. the amount of engagement. Yeah, sure. For now, like everything else. But I was, I was, it's nice to see a feature that uh, is new on Instagram that I'm actually finding useful instead of like an annoying joke. Well, and great news for It'll anybody be an that annoying joke that soon. If if that is, it will be, I'm sure. Uh, but because they haven't rolled that out to everybody, that it's still very, yeah, effective. But to anybody who doesn't know, what I'm talking about a broadcast channel. Basically, lets you start a, a DM conversation with your entire audience. So you create a channel, and they can't talk back to you in any way. They can't message. They can only engage on the stuff you post in the conversation. And you can post anything you normally could in a DM, uh, but also some polls and other types of sticker things that are kind of pointless. But the polls are cool. And so it's just a one-to-many type of interaction. And then people get alerted that a new channel has been made, and they can choose to stay and follow if they want. And, uh, yeah, I've just found it very useful as kind of a repository for... Uh, both keeping up with where my workshops are and um, this whole inside.photo thing, which is great because honestly, the one of the big sticking points with me in, in kind of managing any type of community that I might have is the fact that Facebook groups is still sort of the, the main, seems like, focal point for that. For a lot of companies, they're just go to our Facebook group. Let's build a community on our Facebook group. Support on the Facebook group. And, and I hate Facebook and I hate Facebook groups. And uh, yeah. this is providing a nice bit of a somewhat kind of a bridge between that on Instagram uh, without having to have like a full on group, which is nice. It's been uh, it's been interesting to see and realize all the unique problems that come up with trying to make something that works, not just work for me as one person, you know, and all the different regions and, and uh, skill sets or, or knowledge levels of various people that might be using a thing and how thoroughly you need to make it clear what like the setup instructions are and all that kind of stuff it's it's pretty intense work it through just it sounds like a tuesday yeah it's just... well, this isn't normal for me to have these kinds of things to deal with but it's fun what's your what's your what's the what's the biggest surprise what you got what, what, what's been your pain point besides like oh this is gonna cost money what do you got? the <clears throat> literal setup uh, is but i always knew that was going to be an issue i guess the the fact that Every single, so right now I'm just focusing on Canon bodies. I did order a Z8. Uh, I plan to return it, but I need a couple I mean, you of, don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> no, I need to return it. I can't afford that right now. <laughs> but uh, I need to see what the experience of sending to an FTP server is firsthand so I can create a little manual. The problem is, it's probably the same on Nikon as it is with Canon, where the feature exists on pretty much every Canon body, especially all their mirrorless ones, to, to upload to an FTP server. But the setup of connecting to it, like entering your address and all that, is totally different from one model to the next. So they'll have things subtly named different. In, in like the R62, there's a little icon next to the words that are slightly different words. And it's like trying to account for all the variances of the just getting connected to an FTP server is laughable. And then there's like two steps in the process where it's not intuitive, where something is tappable and you need to tap it with your finger versus uh, hitting a button on like a hardware button. And you want to tap it with your finger, not use the hardware button. And it's so dumb that they don't say that in anywhere other than if you follow a tutorial like in the manual or something. Apple so needs that's, to create a mirrorless DSLR, big boy camera body. Make yeah. it take like that lenses be, or something. That would be get incredible. at me, Johnny. I've. I don't, wait, they broke up for good. Never mind. Um, get at me. I don't know the the poor man's Design Johnny Ive that they had on the last <laughs> thing. Yeah, I don't know. They haven't seemed to surface like a singular design person, and I doubt they ever will again. But maybe. Other than Craig, who's not much of a design person, it seems like. No, he's a he's a guitarist. Yeah, it's frustrating that the it's twenty twenty three and there is no elegant standardized way of quickly getting images off a camera. And this is just dealing with small JPEG files. Thankfully, the service doesn't require raw files because the bandwidth cost for that 
no way would I be able to afford it. It would, it would just, it would be like a thousand dollars a month in overhead for just a couple hundred users, at least if I had to do raw files, but the slowness of a raw file is still just hilarious to, to transfer, uh, just directly to your phone. Even it's like 10 seconds or more. And the thing is the cool thing about FTP transfer, at least on Canon that I hope works on Nikon, you can hit send and jump right back into shooting and it keeps sending in the background. So there's no real interruption, no matter how long it takes. But with a raw file, it is also like that. It just takes longer. So, but if you use any of their apps, like the Canon raw cloud app or whatever, yeah, uh, it locks up the whole camera until it's done transferring. You can't go back to shooting and it's hilarious because nobody wants that. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just one a pinch for a few images, but. I am now realizing that we did not talk about how we shot a wedding. Oh my gosh. Yeah, time is weird. <laughs> we shot a wedding. Barely. It was the, like, I don't know about you. It's been a long time since I've shot regularly for weddings, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I shot, I shot, yeah. I shot, I shot like, uh, I've shot like a hundred, you know, that yeah. was by far the simplest wedding I've yeah. ever shot by. It was many many degrees of you know like i, I, I will say that m that's not that uncommon this one was was unique in that it was done uh by five so it was like literally a nine to five wedding on a saturday which is the wonderful dream. yeah that's yeah. the dream i've had a few of those it's like brunch weddings so yes please more yes and we're just gonna register brunchweddings.com and that's going to be my my niche. I will yeah. only shoot your wedding if I can be home by five. That's yeah. my need. I'm an old the, man. Uh, it, it, it's ripe for that to be. Elopements are on the way out. Destination elopements, that's not as cool as it used to be. We're doing brunch weddings brunch at weddings. the Four Seasons. Oh, yeah. They were a wonderful couple. And what would you think? It was really chill. We only took between us about 4,000 total photos. It was yeah. that chill. No dancing. That's usually 1,500, 2,000 photos alone is just rapid fire of dancing. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, the, the biggest thing that I've learned is that I have not read camera manuals nearly enough. Uh, um, yeah, so, talk to me about the R3 and how I had it set up and so, uh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. your thoughts were. So, so Sam uh, lent me his backup body for uh, the ceremony and the reception, uh, which was all we shot. That was it. He lent me. <laughs> yeah, there's no cocktail hour, no getting ready. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was uh, delightful. I mean, like it, it was legitimately delightful in a, in a strange way. I, d I did not expect to enjoy the like physical body that much, uh, cause I don't like battery grips, but because it was so much lighter than what, uh, DSLR battery grips used to be. Um, yeah. you know, and also I've been carrying around like a four pound GFX <laughs> yeah, for the last the, like three months. And so like my wrist is yeah. ready. Uh, <laughs> So uh, you had, um, so Sam has uh, every dial, all manual mode, and then every dial is uh, ISO, shutter, and aperture, depending on, so there's like the three dials on your camera, so thumb, top, and front, uh, and they all control the separate thing, and then there's a special button that you just hit that switched it to aperture priority, took your aperture, and made everything magical, and that was low-key nuts. Uh, I hit that button a lot. Same. It's And it also, so basically it pairs auto ISO with aperture priority. So it opens up your aperture and to let in as much light as possible. And then it, it does have a limit to how slow the shutter speed will go. I think I have it set to 1 25th of a second. I can't remember. Hey, that's my minimum. I will never yeah. go under that unless I'm like shooting artsy ghosty things. I, I will purpose. if I know I have control. But yeah, I figure a lot of times it, you are in a rapid response situation if you're hitting that button to get into that mode because you want it to auto um, expose everything. But that comes to me from my Nikon days. Nikon has always had a wonderfully elegant implementation of auto ISO. Really, really, really good. And a lot of people never utilized it uh, because they would just shoot aperture priority and let the shutter do the shutter adjustment do most of the work. Um, but auto ISO is so game changing. And a lot of Canon people, they just don't have it on their radar because Canon's when they only had DSLRs, the implementation of it was poor. And that's one big reason when they released the R, they overhauled 
a, a good bit about how their auto ISO worked. It's still a little weird and unpredictable in some ways on the R, but it's only gotten better. And so that's one reason I was finally able to switch uh, and was convinced that I would be fine uh, because the Canon operated much more like my Nikon in terms of auto ISO and the autofocus um, kind of 3D tracking settings. So I'm really glad you liked it. It's totally, I, I think, uh, mission critical feature to have uh, a dedicated button to get into that. I do wish it was a toggleable thing where you didn't have to hold the button the whole time. You could just tap yeah, it. Just tap it would it stay once. there. Tap it again. I don't know why they don't have that. That must be like four lines of code, maybe, to make yeah. happen. But <laughs> they just don't. So yeah, nice. there were there were like definitely moments when I was holding down that button and it slipped or my thumb would like let up a little bit and then it would just be like, oh no, I took a dark photo. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel bad. Or what would, that, what would also be cool is if you could tap it <clears throat> and it would stay in that auto red scenario. So you could just tap it, it would stay, and then you could tweak, fine tune the uh, manually with your ISO ring or whatever from there. But there's no way to do that. It just jumps in and jumps back out, which is fine. It's also really useful if you are shooting in a really high contrast environment where you have to kind of oscillate from shooting against a bright window versus shooting with the window behind you. And now you're shooting into, you know, everything being lit by the window. It's a really nice uh, feature for that. Just jumping around in extremes. So anyway, glad you liked it. Yeah. Any other settings stuff like autofocus? I, I remember you telling I mean, me yeah. on Having the day, you were like, oh my God, this feels like cheating. <laughs> you kind even of though, like even though uh, there's one, I want to say it was the 135 was like, terrible just like trash no, it's probably the samyang samyang 8514 probably the red yeah that could have been like, one some yeah. something was trash at autofocus and like kept just tossing it around and like it was trash so, relative to the other lenses but it's not the worst lens no, it's not good so well like the <laughs> i it was probably just a setting issue on my side of like it doing continuous uh when i wanted it to stop when it like made sense sure um Maybe the, the Sam Yang is a little dicey. It's it's notably not as as smooth and accurate uh, with autofocus. I yeah, like you've never you've you've never really used any of your um, ceremony photos or your uh, reception photos as uh, advertising images or uploaded you know uploads to platforms because they're you know like all the same. Uh, so Pretty I don't. Similar, I, yeah. I legitimately don't know how your um, ceremony photo or like photos of guests or whatever. Like I don't know what yours look like, but I intentionally always shoot through people or other things so there's at least a little bit of depth somehow. Uh, but in the you know like in the not wonderfully lit uh, church that. Uh, caused yeah, the, that was caused a, a handful rough. of problems with the autofocus where it would just be like, oh, you want to focus on this person right here? It's like, no, no, no. I, I want that person very much out of focus. So there's like something visually happening here, please. Uh, and then I just changed the lens yeah. and was like, no, not today. Yeah, all good. I do post a lot more of those filler kind of photos uh, in the occasional long blog post. That's about the only time you would see that in... Uh, my work or if it's a review of a lens because I kind of pull in assets and examples throughout <clears throat> multiple dynamic parts of the wedding day but you're right I don't tend to show a lot of the ceremony moments and I mean which is fine that's not yeah. what people are paying you for right they're paying totally. you for the portrait sessions and the you know well hopefully to some stuff. degree but the the expectation is yeah that it's it's going to be you know it's a uh, we talked about this before I think, or maybe we were talking about it on the day. There's a, only a certain capacity for your brain to operate. And I leave a, enough headroom that uh, I, I pull back the overthinking of how creative I can make every shot when it's just sort of the classic moments of toasts and yeah, people standing up there. Like, I'm not trying to go too crazy thinking about double exposures and reflections and layering, you know, four different things happening in the scene all at once because I want to save that energy for when I have the couple and I, and I can really just full pedal to the metal, my, my creative energy, and then rein it right back into my bread and butter defaults, uh, so to speak. I mean, yeah. occasionally I'll get fancy. I've done a Brenizer method of a first look before a couple times. That's always exciting. What's, but, uh, what, what the hell is that? 
What's the it's a bokeh panorama. So you basically shoot a panorama of the scene of their yeah. first kiss, um, which sounds really difficult and risky, but it's actually really easy. Uh, most of the time, if you do a, a panorama, you would start with the couple or the center of the photo and then shoot everything around it from there. To do it with the first kiss, what I do is uh, lock focus on the couple so that you know their distance to me is fixed. And I shoot everything around them first and then I save the center frame of where they're kissing for the final photo. And then when you stitch together, you get a really beautiful shallow up the field. It's one of the very first photos in my portfolio, if you go to my website, or I can send you a link in the chat. But you, you'll notice it has a very wide field of view, and it's not because it's a 2414, and it's not because it's a tilt shift, it's because you're actually looking at 18, maybe 20 images all stitched together. Um, and because people generally uh, are still uh, like just sitting there watching the ceremony unfold and then they clap once they're kissing and everything uh, because like most of the audience uh, friends and family were seated and still uh, the stitch worked really well I'll text you the um, I love that the shot yeah it's really cool put it in the show notes uh, show I just took notes. a screenshot so I pasted it in our iMessage but that's fine I, I will put it in the show notes okay. I'm a I'm a show note hero this is nervous looking this makes me feel nervous what? oh yeah that is terrifying what a nice what a nice weird little thing what this photo that you just sent oh the thing that you just terrifying. described that's like that's nuts yeah it's beautiful and it's that's cropped pretty heavily because it's just the header of my portfolio page it's a beautiful wide uh, you know three by two image and uh yeah it's Pretty, pretty crazy. And I shot that with a 135. And actually, uh, when I took all of the surrounding images and, and kind of had the middle uh, still open, uh, something happened. Somebody like came up to give a prayer or something. So I left a leaf where I was standing and I just memorized my camera settings exactly. And so I came back after that person was done with the prayer, perfectly back where I was before, framed it up again, same settings and shot the final image about two minutes later after when I had taken the original ones. So oh, yeah. pretty crazy, but that is very, that takes a lot of like mental energy yeah. to then go do family photos and then have to do the couple session. That's a lot of thought. <laughs> Legitimately. That was also one of the best, uh, fastest family photo session I had ever experienced. Like usually, uh, especially whenever I've been a second shooter, I am like just wrangling everyone. And like, everyone's just like, oh no, that's my last name. I'm up there. Great. I'm I'm the niece. Yeah. I'll be there. Okay. And then they just, you know, stood there. They smiled and then they left. Some of that I think is also societal. I don't know when your last wedding was really. Uh, and, and I still get the occasional one where it's like just chaos and like, why is this taking so long? But normally these days, especially with South, South Asian weddings, like people know the drill at this point. They've just, everyone goes to a lot more weddings than I think they used to. And it is much more of a, we know this will be faster if we just listen and wait <laughs> versus... Maybe yeah. I can make myself disappear so I don't have to deal with these photos. Like that that mindset never helps, but I think it used to be a bit more dominant. The one that I was always struggling with when I was shooting a decade ago was the people that wanted to be in the ones they weren't supposed to be in, right? Like the aunt that wants to be in every photo. I was like, no, um, Aunt Sandy, it's not Really, time. really helps also to have uh, a phone in your hand or in your second shooter's hand to have what's clearly a list that you're referring to because I think people yeah. tend to be a little bit more respectful of that being that you have a list. list. But I totally know what you mean with the... What I hate and what still occasionally happens if I don't keep enough momentum and energy in the direction of things is somebody saying, oh his button's undone or his tie's totally crooked or his fly's down. And I'm like, now you've just undermined me. Like, I'm looking yeah. for this stuff. You don't have to. Maybe I was about to get to it. Like, the fact that you are pointing it out and not me, the photographer, makes me feel like nobody can trust me now to look for those details, even though I'm desperately trying to all the time. You probably uh, don't need to personalize that. They're probably just trying to make themselves feel important, not not undermine you. No, it's probably in my head. You're, you're correct. That's true. Uh, but it doesn't make me feel good. I'm like, I got this. I'm looking, or they point out something that's not in the frame because I'm cropping it out or something like that. It's like, no, I know that there's a fire hydrant behind them or a moving truck. I, I can't see it in my camera. It's fine. But now they're just thinking about the fact that, oh, 
is there a moving truck in all the other photos that we took? Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Can but can't have that. Uh, what other what other stuff have I don't know like there the um pa, pa, pa. it was I mean like it was nice the food was not great yeah it was it was it was a little bit depressing to have a little we we had a little tray in the back that was just for us and that was very exciting I loved that self serve stepped out yeah. and there was just Crab significantly and, better yeah. food and it was buffet style which is almost always. I try and make myself scarce if I haven't been told anything about the food. And if it's buffet, I just kind of go through and just... Yeah, I, I really wanted a piece of fried chicken instead of the dried chicken yeah. breast that we got. And that was my, you know, but the, you know, that's me being greedy. We're, we're, we're here. We're vendors. We can, I ate a I lot mean, of cookies. A couple cookies. We had a dedicated tub of water to go get if we wanted like that. Love that. That's amazing. Don't have to wait in line at a bar yeah. to get a glass of water. <laughs> Yeah, there yeah. was uh, there were gold flakes in the sangria, so that was that was fun. I uh, got to take a you know a shot of a, a, some gold flakes. Yeah, you know, pretty fun. Pretty fun. <laughs> uh, what what other little bits? We lucked out with the lighting during the reception. Beautiful yeah. natural light, just giant windows uh, that had indirect sunlight pretty much everywhere in that room. Just wonderful. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I was hoping for a problem. I wanted something to go wrong and there to, and like, I guess something did a little go wrong with uh, a thunderstorm rolling in and uh, the true. outdoor area getting closed right before we were about to go outside to take portraits on the patio. Yeah, we had Even to backtrack. That, not, I hate doing that because it was like, we just, we just walked back and forth, but I mean, it was a little yeah. chaotic. Yeah. yeah. And there, but there's not much you can do with just a surprise Maryland thunderstorm because uh, Maryland loves to throw out a surprise thunderstorm. Um, and you know, like that's not a, that's not a problem that we solve so much as just like okay, well, good thing we have all these other locations that we've already got. Let's take these photos. It was nice we had time to to come up with a route to take. That was really great. The How thing, often do you get to do that? I usually have a. It's more in the evenings when I've had some downtime during the reception, where I, you know we're not yeah. moving to another location anytime soon. I'll come up with a little route for night photos, uh, and because all our couple portraits was the last hour of the wedding you know all the friends left and then we had an hour to just shoot the couple which i i do not like it was better to do it then because of the lighting and everything else other than the weather changing but i i don't like having uh because both of them you, you're kind of worn after seven hours of a wedding day you're you're yeah. a little worn out and that comes through if, if you're not lighting people really well but other than that um the yeah, pretty pretty rarely, I would say, unless it's a night photo that I have like a good solid route to take. A lot of times my approach is, okay, I have you for photos. We have 20 minutes or whatever. Let's walk to an end point in a direction that seems like it's going to make sense. That is where I'm kind of pre-scouting some ideas. I might stop and take a shot, but probably not because I really try and get to an end point and then sh tell them, then we'll shoot our way back to where we came yeah. from. That also creates an unspoken expectation for them of where we are in the process of being done with photos. The closer we get back to where we started, the closer we are to being done without them having to ask or be wondering in the back of their head, how long is this gonna go? Because I used to, okay, let's start taking photos. And to maximize time, I thought, all right, I should start right away, right here. Okay, let's walk a little further out, right here, and then further out. And it's like, where does that end? You get really far out, and now you're definitely gonna find and want some photos on the walk back. Yeah. And uh, you know that just becomes a little intense for um, the couple if they, if it's in the middle of cocktail hour or something, and they want to go to the end of it. So yeah. I find that really key, and is about the the most true scouting that I would do. It also keeps it relative. The, the light is unlikely to change in that twenty minutes too much. Of if I do have an idea, and we walk past it and keep going to an endpoint, and then it, the light will probably be similar enough as we're shooting on our way back to to utilize it. Um, but so you know, there's, there's a lot. yeah the, this for this reception uh, to give to give full context there was uh, the cake cutting and then everyone went home at four uh, 
And yeah. we are our portrait session with them started after everyone left. And so after they cut the cake, we had downtime of just people eating cake. There's not they eat, there are no photos to take of people shoveling cake in their face. Yeah. Uh, there weren't we a lot the of kids there either. Like if there are kids, that can be fun because kids are funny eaters for like a few pictures, but there were none really. Yeah. So uh, so we took a little bit of downtime and walked through our entire floor and the fourth floor, which were the two floors on the uh, hotel that we had easy access to, uh, and walked through and planned the route of, like, we know we need the chandelier photos, so, like, we're going to end there. Where can we go to the left of there? Because that was, you know, to the right was the chandelier, so where can we go left? And we just, you know, like, went through a ballroom, found a very dark room to take some portraits, found a back uh, like conference room and then we were going to go outside couldn't because uh, a thunderstorm rolled in and they locked and sandbagged all the doors <laughs> that was weird I did not expect yeah. that uh, but I, I will say that hotel is a bit like a maze it was nice to have a, a bit of a plan because some doors were locked some were unlocked some were rooms being used by other events some weren't and, and some the the room was accessible through just one door and the yeah. other ones would be locked and so it was good to not be wasting the client's time we, oh, I guess we can't. Let's try the next one. Oh, that's the next one's open. Great. Let's come in here. And then it's like, but wait, I can't. I can't turn the lights off now. Like, the, yeah, yeah, all that mess just is wasting their time. So we spent we spent like twenty minutes walking around through these things, find, figured out a route, and then you know, like when you're in those. When you're figuring out the route, you're also kind of figuring out the shots that you're going to take. So, you know, like as we passed a big, you know, like mural portrait, uh, you know, painting sort of thing, it's like, okay, cool. That could work as a double exposure here. You know, we can shoot something against that with a light here. This is the dark room, so we can do something with the light. Uh, and then, you know, then it came time and we were done in like 30, 35 minutes tops. Yeah, the most. And, yeah, and uh, like, I'm actually going through a lot of the my favorite portraits today. I got a little behind because of this oh, other project. I need to send you my stuff <laughs> from the Fuji. My, my, yes. Yeah, my six, my my six good photos <laughs> from the Fuji. It's, oh. it's, no, there are more than six, but not more than uh, thirty. Who can say? It was a good wedding to have you, but it was a little out of the the norm. So if yeah, I, I would come love a another, more complex. Uh, there's a few harder. happening in September. Harder. So. September, yeah. that's great. Yeah, be here before you know it. You were also wonderful, very uh, aware of your surroundings in a way that um, some people aren't, <laughs> I think. And Is that like a crouching thing or a wa- like what do you... No. <laughs> what's it, what's, just, what's just, wrong uh, look like? Well, there, there tends to be a lot of um, people I've worked with where they tend to focus way too much on the couple uh, because they... Obviously, the couple is the, the key player and everything, but it's way more valuable for me if you see that I'm photographing the couple to, yeah, get reaction shots from people yeah, or I, get... Second shooter never really, besides like kisses, right? Like shooting the couple's not not my job. It's the... Right. But that's not always the case from a lot of people I work with where they're just like, they think they're backing me up because, you know, I need a backup photo of whatever. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> You have the right mindset and, and, and also just being aware of the crossfire of m- m- being in the background of each other's shots. Uh, I didn't see that happening too much, um, which is nice. And yeah, it was just a pleasant wedding other than the insanely warm humidity. But everything and was the indoors. McDonald's. We should have gotten <laughs> breakfast Taco Bell. Yeah. I went to McDonald's for the like first time in forever and like the 10th time in my life with sam uh for breakfast way too early so you're like yeah let's just go get some mcdonald's sam's right a, down the road sam's an, uh, a mcdonald's oatmeal man which was a, a shock i thought you would be multiple hash browns uh nope. given the vibe you give off i don't know i and there i was with my multiple hash browns because yeah. i put out a multiple hash brown vibe <laughs> that's mine it costs like and hash browns are like four bucks i spent like four dollars on two what? hash browns yeah oh it was my nuts. gosh wild it was nuts inflation man that's crazy <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not inflation that's not that's that's just them raising the price of hash browns probably yeah. yeah. It was weird to get home at such an early hour and be tired, but like so much of the day left, I didn't, I was like, I, I should be doing something. I'm not just going to veg. That's the next day. That's Sunday for me. Yeah. So it was, it was odd. It kind of threw off my sense of time. So one of the things I've been paying attention to is like my recovery time with the, but neither of the weddings that 
I've I second shot in the last couple of weeks are good indicators of what my actual recovery time would be because with the first one it was very last minute of like hey it's 11 can you second shoot a wedding today your report time is 90 minutes and I was like yeah <laughs> sure yeah, why not pretty intense uh and so that was like not that with me by the way yeah uh so I didn't have I didn't have uh really any time to prepare and I you know would have treated my body differently the day before right you know like I would not have had a second cocktail with dinner I would have gone to bed earlier I would have probably eaten something better than like a burger and tater tots or something uh, <laughs> versus versus mm. this one where I like oh I knew about that but it was also still like an early you know, not, not at a super early start time and no real hard responsibilities, right? Like the slowest, because when it's a getting ready, you know, you roll in and it's like, okay, cool. I need to start taking pictures immediately. And I'm usually trying to make uh, grown men who are uncomfortable in front of a camera feel natural. And like, it's a start immediately. And so like you're, you have to be on immediately to get the vibe going because they're not going to do it themselves because they're going to be almost certainly hung over from the night before of, you know, partying before the wedding. And uh, that was like strange of just like, oh yeah, just casually get in the mood to take some photos, right? Like we were at the church for like 45 minutes before people started showing up. And so we had like time to take all little detail shots and like, oh, here's nice. It's beautiful church. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was gorgeous. So nice. It was built in 1894. One of the, one of the older men wanted me to know. He like to know. He came that. over and he was like, "This it. church was built in 1894. You know how many, you know how many donations they would have had to get to make it this nice, still that old. It's yeah, that's crazy." And Can I, I tell like, you? It's it's really interesting. I don't remember. I think maybe it happened once with you, but it's funny how often people will approach me uh, standing next to whoever I'm shooting with and they assume the other person is the primary shooter for some reason. I don't know what it is about me. I guess I don't give off primary long hair. photographer vibes. You think it's the long hair? Yeah, it's long hair. It could be. It could be literally something as simple as that where people just assume, oh, clearly he's the the help. <laughs> the help for the help. But yeah. uh, The, the, uh, the yeah. vendor's vendor. Uh, <laughs> Which is fine yeah. with me. It's, it's fine. I don't want to give off too much of a, you know, in, I, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just interesting. That, there's that, a there's a very nice grandmother who is there who is certain that she knew me from somewhere else. Like, have I seen you around church? Have I? Have we? Is it? Did you shoot uh, Tim and Sandy? You know, like I was like, no, I'm just I'm new. I, I promise <laughs> I have not shot the, another wedding you've been to, ma'am. This is this is yeah, it. I this just moved first, here. Yeah, like, like seven months ago. <laughs> I, I am just a I'm just a white man with a beard and glasses. Please and thank you. Uh, I promise that we all do kind of look the same. Especially when, well, you weren't wearing black, black, but most of the time I'm wearing all black and other. Oh my God. That was legitimately the hardest part. This is the hardest part of returning to second shooting weddings is uh, I don't have any dark Triple. neutral clothing. I'm a rainbow boy. I, I like my yep. bright colors and, you know, like all my pants are pink and purple and all my shoes are uh, ta-da and, you know, and like that's fine green. that's totally fine if it's your you know the the set expectation it's trickier when you're second shooting because you don't want to be too off brand from what the client is expecting from their primary but you dress totally fine but you're right i think in that the mental load of putting together your outfit to wear to a wedding can be exhausting and it used yeah. to be for me uh i found um maybe like eight years ago a shirt that worked for me, Amazon, like some third party Korean shirt with a built in pocket square. I bought one, wore it, loved it, bought 10 more. It's like, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be set yeah. for the next five years until they're all crap and worn out. And uh, same with pants. So you just, and I rotate through about five different pairs of pants. So I always have a clean one. Uh, same with my Under Armour, like, uh, super tight undershirt so that catches all my sweat same with my underwear same with my socks same with my shoes i do not have to think about it at all unless you know enough of them aren't clean that i need to do a load of laundry and yeah. that is so so, so nice uh, in the morning of the wedding or even the evening before to not have to think about putting something out that that can be like a solid 20 minutes of 
energy. Uh, and then you're also, I think if you're rotating through a, a lot of different outfits on a regular basis, you, it's a distraction in a way. Like when I have a new pair of pants or something like that, that I'm trying, it, it's like weird to get comfortable and be like, do I, do I like these pants? Do I like the way they fit? Do I like the way they feel when I crotch down? Do they feel like they're holding me back from, you know, a photo idea I might want to try because they're too tight or too long or whatever. All those different variables add up. It's these like micro decisions of how they, and, and how they affect you that I'm constantly on police for to try and just know put that away. This is a solvable problem so that I can just focus on the personality, the, the human uh, interaction, remembering who people are, and all those other micro decisions that actually matter <laughs> so much more. Yeah. Uh, the the, the second clothing, hardest sorry. part for me, aside from putting together a non-colored outfit, which was legitimately difficult, I had to purchase, I had to purchase new clothing. Because uh, I thank just, you for that. I'm, I'm a color, of course. Anything for you, Sam. Uh, was was uh, it, it's like I have to become a different version of me. I'm I'm a little too um, flamboyant and charming to exist in a uh, like show up 100 percent as Daniel in a vendor situation, right? Like I have to be subdued in a way that's uh, unnatural to me of, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is great, do that, right? You know, as opposed to my normal, if I'm doing a portrait session or even just hanging out with friends, you know, it's like I'm gassing everybody up. Everybody's getting way too many compliments. I'm flirting with everybody, and they feel it, and they know it, and they love it, right? But, like, I can't do that with a groom. <laughs> I mean, you can, <laughs> but, like, it only to... I used to. I, I used to be much more level. flirty and flamboyant with everyone. Everyone, I think, used to think that I was gay, for sure, because of how feminine I would come across to try and get, you know, especially the women to, to pose in a certain way. You kind of have to assume this weird, like, feminine touch in the way you move your hands and, and kind of pose yourself for them to mirror. It's really interesting. But I've dialed that back big time because it's just exhausting. That You and I are kind of opposites in that way of our default it is, states. It is exhausting <laughs> to not do yeah. that. It is. That's so funny. Was, <laughs> and like, it was also clearly, you know, it, it was a... It was a Catholic wedding. It was not the vibe to roll up and be like, hello. Very, very, very Catholic, yes. Uh, <laughs> and I, yeah, I just don't think that would have flown uh, well. But, you know, so like being like, oh, yeah, no, come this way. As opposed to like, right on this way, baby, you're gorgeous. I love you. Hey, uh, right. Like any, anything like that. So maybe I'll just, if, if I if I start uh, doing weddings, maybe I'll just be like, oh, you're, uh, my tagline will be like, your gay best friend that's shooting your elopement. It has to be home by five, right? Like just narrow down the scope of weddings I shoot. So if someone comes through, they're like, oh, he can wear pink and we're going to get him home before dinner. Uh, I I will book one wedding a year. (laughs) (laughs) And that's enough. So the, oh crap, I was going to make a point. Oh no, it's come back to me point. Come back. It was was there. Semi recently, Uh, Sam solved someone's life and he's like, I've got it. You're going to make so much money. And I'll tell you after this nap. And then he woke up from the nap and he didn't have it. <laughs> I forgot that happened. Yeah. Uh, so the other, but what I was going to say is that is one of the amazing things about weddings is the array of personalities you get to interact with. And I think it's a, a healthy exercise to, you, you're right, it is, it is exhausting sometimes, but I do think it's healthy um, to be in new, a totally new group dynamic of personalities, older people, people your age, people younger, where you have to kind of dial up and down all day the the intensity of how personable and friendly you need to be versus hold back and give people space because maybe they're emotional or something intense is happening or what have you. That emotional dial is going all over the place. And I, and I just find it very um compelling and just a good way to build character as a person uh if you if you enjoy that kind of thing a lot of people i think grow to resent that aspect of shooting weddings and and they start to see everybody as looking the same because a lot of weddings do have a similar kind of template and so they they it it, it tends to burn them out and become just sort of uh grumpy about the fact that they're at a wedding you know when it's their 500th but i find trying to concentrate as much on all those different variety of personalities where you've got the ultra conservative grandparent and now you've got the, you know, 
trans nephew that are yeah. all in the same room that you have to engage with in a way that makes all of them feel comfortable. It's wild. There was definitely the the like queer a table in the corner of this wedding where they yeah. were like further away from everyone. I was like, I see you. I, <laughs> hello, my people. I shall take and nice portraits the, of you. The woman with the, <laughs> I loved your description, the uh, machine gun laugh. Of <laughs> how it was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> like it, 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 you knew it was a good joke because yeah. you could just, there it was. I loved it. It's so fun to be the person tasked, literally paid to observe all these different, characters um engaging with one another and it's it's just fun i think to to see how somebody can laugh so loud and it just be totally normal <laughs> for them yeah. uh or you know what other examples there's endless examples of, of that i think on one of the one of the things that was always interesting about wedding photography to me is just that personality stuff because like the the photography you know candidly is is not that interesting to me right the i i love the portrait sessions with the couples but like Taking photos of a reception is there are only. It's a lot of people sitting at a round tables, right? Like, right yeah, you, you crouch a little bit, you get a centerpiece in front, and don't even have to do inside, that now with the mirrorless right, cameras. Like, you just, yeah, you don't even have to crouch much. Yeah, right. You, you just, you just hold it down, flip it, and like make sure something's a little in the way. You get a clear one, you know, like look for hugs. Try to, you know, like nail focus on the ring on the back of the back or their face, and like that's that's pretty much it, right? Like that is uh, I, I feel myself slip into autopilot immediately as soon as the reception starts. Or I'm just like, yep, I know what I'm doing. Clickety, clickety, clickety. Right, you know, like <laughs> yes. I got my, uh, the, the earliest things that I shot were like concerts. And even that was like, you know, it's the same thing, right? Like you... <laughs> Even even when unless you're, doing you're able to like be up on stage next to the musician and do whatever you want and yeah even then it probably does start to become routine in a way that it's like meh but yeah from the lower perspective where you're just in one front facing that's that's got to be tough to get yeah the most and like the most you can do is like sure you can have a flash and the slow shutter and get your streaky lights for Little your prism. screamo bands yeah. or you can do a prism or you can do a reflection off your phone or whatever but even then it's like okay and you did it. That's done, right? Like you have got your creative shot for the night. Now there's nothing more. Oh, I didn't uh, tell you about my other product idea. This is another one. Oh God. Maybe okay. maybe it's me. even been done by now because I've had this idea for years and I'm still annoyed I haven't actually seen it, but I'm sure it's been done as a gimmick. Is a, uh, a purpose-built designed strobe light flash that is a little drone. So the you're not strapping it to a drone but it is a drone so it's perfectly weighted and has enough power to fly and be really nimble and uh essentially how fun would it be if you could be shooting a concert and and have the ability to fly your flash around the stage oh uh, yeah and get like side lights back lights like control that sucker and then boom uh just just rip off so many different lighting perspectives it'd be amazing or um my the real idea was to uh okay so you have your flash that's a drone right usually all you need is to be able to like have it hover in a spot you wouldn't ideally even need a controller you just like step where you you need it to be you hit a button and then you walk away and it just floats in place so you don't need to carry a light stand it just hovers in you know keeping its orientation in the way that you pointed it you go back take the photo pop psh, done go grab the the freaking drone flash and you're on to the next thing with no light stands or anything that is a product i cannot believe doesn't exist you wouldn't even need a remote control you wouldn't need ftc you know approval to fly it it would just be a hovering flash how cool That'd how cool, cool. And it could have like a little telescoping and, uh, antenna like from a TV. So if you needed it to be really, really high, it could still do that without having to have something uh, mounted, you know, like a tripod holding it on the, on the ground. I mean, just uh, just have like a little, you know, you ha you'd have to have a sensor on the ceiling. How to make one of these. And then suddenly, no, because like you can't, there's, 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 there's no, there's no uh, margins in hardware. There's no, there's no. That's true. But that's the kind of product every photographer would buy just because they would it's like the the what was the gary fong like giant modifier everyone bought that would just like create a larger flash head and it was like 80 dollars, and you would buy right. it just because that's what you did when you start with photography but no one ever really used them 90 percent of people would stop using them i would say 
this flash drone is 900% a thing that you would gift to me after using three times in like two years. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, a lot of the overhead of why I don't use off-camera flash is the fact that you need an assistant that can read your mind in terms of angle and distance and how things need to be oriented once they start to see the photo you're going for. Or you need to carry the, the flash with the stand yourself. So you have this whole big thing that even if you don't use it for every shot, you still have to carry it with you, which is super annoying. But a little floaty drone that you can just whip out of your back pocket. And I'm going to work on this today. I have a Canon makes a super tiny, tiny flash. I'll work on this um, today. Use, <laughs> work on your website. <laughs> yeah, no, Write a thing on your website. You're, we I are, to, we are I have like, to make an entire new website for Insight now. Oh my so, God. No, you don't. I will, Well, I, I'm hiring someone to do it. Don't, like no, just the, the branding. What? No, stop. The it. same guy I always hire for branding oh stuff. God. He's not going to make a website. Out. He's making. He's going to over. He, he's going to overcharge you. Again. I would love for you to do the website component once I have the branding guidelines done. What's the branding? How much? How much? Uh, we'll talk. It's about just going to be later. fonts and colors and you know a logo okay, of some okay. kind. We're going to talk about this later. Okay. Know, this is we'll fight about this offline. I'm going to play around because I just bought the the well a couple months ago the tiny tiny DJI drone. It's the lightest and quietest one they make, and uh, I think it could carry. How many how many drones Canon do you flash. have? Do you just have that Four. one? Four. Okay. Do you have the new Mavic with the no. nice? Okay. No. Will no, you, I'm probably never going to spend go to that Iceland. much money on a drone again because. It is exactly the kind of thing that I've, I'm obsessed with for three months, and then I, it just sits, and I never use it. Oh yeah, should we should we buy one from uh, B and H before we go to Iceland and then return it? It's not a bad idea. I think Iceland's like that. the only spot where I'm like, oh yeah, I would use like I would legitimately use thing. a drone photo. Yeah, that because it is so spread out, and the, one of the things I hate about drones is how annoying they are in society and like flying yeah. them around a neighborhood or something is is like i just feel so gross like i'm polluting everybody's noise or the the well yeah i'm polluting their environment with noise yeah and so Can't awkward it. yeah all right a silent even floating strobe drone you heard it here folks but that's first. the thing to just hover in place holding a very lightweight uh what is a flash that's built into the thing um done Done. People would pay 600 bucks for that. No of question. Course. Of course. Yeah, people pay $1,000 for the Profoto A1 stroke. Let's just send this to Godox or whomever and be like, hey, yeah. here's our here's the idea. Make, Make it. this and give us a cut. Yeah, right. <laughs> Please and thanks. You heard it here first. Uh, well, Sam, as always, I appreciate you. Yes, I'm sweating bullets up here. It's time to go. Oh, my God. Enjoy Seattle. Adios, amigo. Uh, will you be home by the next time we record? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Okay. That's good. Well, I'm glad you have a broken mic to take with you. Sounds good. Okay, bye. Okay. It's, it's, Appreciate it. it. Stop hitting record. <laughs> One, two, three, four.